His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the President of the International Equestrian Federation, the FEI, in Mar Davos and his accompanying delegation in the presence of His Majesty the King's personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamid Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's representative for charity works and youth affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and the first Vice President of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa. The FEI President presented His Majesty the King with the FEI Leaders Medal, the first medal to be awarded by the FEI since its establishment in recognition of His Majesty's continued support for improving equestrianism and supporting the efforts of the FEI in this field. His Majesty the King welcomed the FEI President and thanked him for the medal, which reflects the strong cooperation between them. He praised Mr. DeVos's efforts to stage various extremely successful championships which have served to develop the sport. His Majesty King Hamid affirmed Bahrain's achievements in equestrian sports at regional and international levels through its participation in various championships which have helped to enhance and develop equestrian sports in Bahrain. His Majesty noted that Bahrain owns the best horse stables, registered with the World Arabian Horse Organization, WAHO, and said that equestrian sports are now considered part of Bahrain's cultural heritage. He stressed the importance of enhancing cooperation with the FEI to achieve further progress in this field and highlighted the sport's role in strengthening international relationships and wished the FEI president further success. The FEI president expressed appreciation for His Majesty's welcome, commending Bahrain's achievements in winning various regional and international championships. He praised Bahrain's equestrian heritage and expressed the FEI's keenness to enhance cooperation with the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the board chairman of the Sunni endowment, Sheikh Salman bin Isa Al Khalifa, in which he expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his constant support to the Sunni endowments. He also presented His Majesty with a number of books published by the Sunni endowments. His Majesty hailed the efforts of the Sunni endowments in taking care of mosques and for its role in preparing imams and preachers who helped to spread values of unity and tolerance within the Bahraini society. His Majesty also noted the efforts to develop endowments in the kingdom. After the meeting, Sheikh Salman bin Isa Al Khalifa expressed his appreciation at his meeting with the King. The board chairman of the Sunni endowments reviewed the board's achievements that contribute to the national economy. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabir Palace today a number of senior royal family members, senior officials and business people who congratulated the Prime Minister on the success of his recent medical checkups. The Prime Minister hailed the noble sentiments of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the people of Bahrain during his recent medical indisposition, saying that their support confirms the strong cohesion between the people and the leadership. He said the development process was continuing to meet the needs and aspirations of the people for a more prosperous future. He confirmed the importance of redoubling efforts to preserve Bahrain's achievements and called on everyone to exert greater efforts to build on the kingdom's development and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed pride in the continuous honouring of Bahrainis regionally and internationally, expressing respect and pride in them. He said the Kingdom continues to support loyal Bahrainis who are working for the success of the nation and the people, stressing that awareness of the challenges facing the region was vital to uniting efforts and protecting the homeland's security and stability.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received at Gudubia Palace today the Thai Princess and Businesswoman, Raja Darastri Jan Kura, who is currently on a visit to the Kingdom. The meeting discussed the excellent relations between Bahrain and Thailand and ways of consolidating them. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister said the visit reflects the deep rooted friendly relations between the two countries. He congratulated Thailand and its people on the anniversary of their National Day and the 88th birthday of the Thai monarch, His Majesty King Bumbi Bumbibol Adulya Day. He also wished Thailand and its people continued progress and prosperity and asked the Thai princess to convey his greetings to the Thai monarch, marking the occasion. The Prime Minister confirmed the strength of bilateral relations, supported by a shared vision of enhancing cooperation in oil fields to serve the best interests of the people. His Royal Highness commended the excellent relations and joint cooperation, especially in the economic, investment and commercial sectors. He said the Kingdom of Bahrain pays great attention to encouraging the private sector to take part in joint projects and investments to benefit both countries' economies. For her part, the Thai Princess praised the deep-rooted relations between the two countries, thanks to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's keenness to enhance friendship. She confirmed Thailand's pride and respect for the bilateral relations, highlighting the Kingdom's broad development and wished Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received today at Gudabir Palace the editor in chief and publisher of the Society in Diplomatic Review magazine, Gloria Starkins, who presented His Royal Highness with a special edition of the magazine for receiving four awards from the United Nations. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the Kingdom's Development March, which has gained international recognition. He also affirmed Bahrain's support for all efforts aimed at combating terrorism. During the meeting, His Royal Highness noted the importance of enhancing cooperation within the international community in order to achieve the best for the future of humanity. His Royal Highness also stressed the importance of peace and stability to achieve the aims and aspirations of people. For her part, Ms. Starkins expressed her congratulations to His Royal Highness for receiving the ICT and Sustainable Development Award from the ITU and praised His Royal Highness's major role in the Kingdom's development at various levels. The editor-in-chief commended Bahrain's freedom of religion and highlighted the efforts of Bahrain's government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, in achieving development in various fields. The Society and Diplomatic Review magazine published a special edition promoting His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's remarkable efforts in the development of the Kingdom. The magazine highlighted Bahrain's sustainable development achievements and noted His Royal Highness's receipt of the International Telecommunications Award to become the first Arab Prime Minister to be honoured by the ITU. Statistics show that the Kingdom has achieved 100% of its primary education goals and has established itself as the top-ranking Arab country in exam results in maths and in science. The magazine also noted that Bahrain has been ranked 13th internationally for economic freedom by the Heritage Organization and 8th by the Fraser Institute. The magazine notes Bahrain's keenness to achieve its post-2015 sustainable development goals in accordance with His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's vision of providing all the needs and requirements of every Bahraini citizen. The BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Diab bin Zaga Al Naimi, received at Isa Air Base today in the presence of the Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, His Highness Major Sheikh Ali bin Hamid Al Khalifa. Members of the BDF Marib Task Force, which is participating in the Saudi-led Arab coalition as part of Operation Restore Hope in Yemen. During the meeting, the BDF Chief of Staff appreciated the sincere efforts of the BDF staff and their dedication and efforts in performing their duties as part of the Saudi-led Arab coalition to restore the legitimacy in Yemen. Present at the meeting were the commander of the Royal Bahraini Air Force, Major General Sheikh Hamid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and a number of BDF officers.
At the invitation of His Majesty the King's representative for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the President of the International Equestrian Federation, the FEI, in Mar Davos, and his accompanying delegation arrived in the Kingdom. Mr. DeVos was received by the President of Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, Brief, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and the head of Group 7, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and members of Brief. Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid conveyed the greetings of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid to the FEI President and hailed the strong relationship between Brief and the FEI. Mr. DeVos expressed appreciation for His Highness Sheikh Nasser's invitation and praised His Majesty the King's support for equestrianism. He said his visit would enhance cooperation and achieve further progress internationally. During the visit, the FEI president will meet a number of officials and will also discuss with His Highness Sheikh Nasser issues regarding the equestrian sports and the steps taken by brief to improve this sport. The Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, chaired the Council's weekly meeting in which it approved the report by the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee on preventing the exploitation of religious platforms for promoting political ideas. The Council then approved a suggestion on the rehabilitation of people with special needs. The Council also approved a report by the Committee for Foreign Affairs, Defence and National Security on the agreement between Bahrain and Tajikistan to avoid double taxation. The meeting discussed a report by the same committee on amending some law provisions of the Penal Code. A delegation from Bahrain is participating in the parliamentary meeting alongside the Climate Change Conference in Paris, comprising Shura members Dr Mohamed Ali and Zahwa al Khawari. The event, organised by the Interparliamentary Union, is discussing a plan to keep up with the new Climate Change Convention. We were joined earlier by Bahrain's delegation member, Zawa al Khawari, who gave us more details on the meeting. The climate change is felt through the world and its a global pro a problem. Therefore, the adopted document, which will be attached to the final act of the Paris con uh, Conference, will highlight the main concern, the general concern of the climate change, uh, mainly the common uh, but uh, differentiate uh, responsibilities and all the uh, issues that was covered in the previous uh, agreement as well of agreement uh, as uh, they approved or adopted the agreement then as a legislative we have to have our own national legislation in addition to that the the implementation that need to have a certain budget so the role of the parliamentarians is to uh, uh, develop the legislation as well as locate a certain budget to implement all these requirements uh, actually, this, this, that's what we are working on, that uh, we are very, a vulnerable, vulnerable uh, area of the climate change. Therefore, we need an act, our uh, implementation of all the world that need to coll collectively to do an action which is more precise in order to uh, achieve the global requirement or uh, reduce the impact of a climate change issue.